chaga elixir in my uh, lavaza coffee this morning i just got the funniest text from my mom you'll recall from my grocery haul this week that i um didn't get chayote squash because they had the spines on them and when i went to pick up the squash the spines they're really sharp and so i decided not to get them i don't i don't know what the deal is with the spines on the chayote squash. One of you all mentioned spines to me when I first started consuming them and you're like, be careful of the spines. They can leave, uh, make your, your fingers tingle. And so I didn't get it this week because for whatever reason, Kroger suddenly got in spiny chayote squash. Well, my mom <laughs> just texted me a picture of a bag full of the spiny chayote squash and she's like, what is this? This is not what you typically get. Apparently she did the um, the delivery that she does the Kroger click it and deliver it or whatever option that you can do. And uh, they got they brought her the spiny chayote squash. She's like, yeah, I wanted to try them because you always show them in your grocery hauls and this is what they gave me. <laughs> like, don't touch them. They are, they're mean. Yeah, they're, they're really, I don't know. Comment below if you guys use the spiny ones. I think you can probably just rub the spines off with a cloth and you know, so long as you're wearing gloves and it's fine, but yeah, so that's unfortunate. She got the spiny squash. But anyways, a very nice viewer from Canada sent me some of the Garnier Ombrelle sunscreens. Thank you so much. Um, and so I wanted to share them with you all. I put on this morning, which you saw in my morning skincare routine, the Garnier Ombrelle SPF 45 face. Um, these are chemical sunscreens, about three of them here I'll show you, and the SPF 45 that I have here that I put on this morning, as well as the SPF 60 that I have, are both um, chemical sunscreens that have Mexeril in them. Mexeril is the UVA, the filter that gets really good coverage against UVA and is very stable. It's approved actually for use in sunscreens here in the States, but L'Oreal owns it, and while it's approved, I don't know what it is, the, whatever the hoops that the FDA requires, I guess it's cost prohibitive for them to use it. So they only have this one sunscreen sold in the States that has Mexeril on it, it's SPF 15. Um, so, you know, and the other reason I think they don't use it a lot is that they, we just have so few other filters that they can combine things with that I think it makes it actually hard for them to create a broad spectrum sunscreen with it. And that's why the one that we have is only SPF 15. That's what I think. So, you know, they can get even better UVA 
coverage in their sunscreens. And the reason that's important is because, you know, what's gonna burn you is UVB, but UVB is actually only a very small portion of the UV dose that you get from the sun. The majority of the UV that hits your skin is UVA. And UVA are those wavelengths that you don't really perceive in your brain. They're the ones that come through the clouds. They are, they come through the window. So they're hitting me in the face right now. They, um, also, you know, aren't reflected in things like the UV index. The UV index captures UVB. UVA is, is, is not captured, is not reflected in that. And so you, you get bombarded by that a lot. And it penetrates in the skin really deep, damages collagen, ages the skin, and suppresses the immune system. For people with darker skin types, it's what contributes to hyperpigmentation in their skin. And um, so it's, it's a, they're wavelengths of light that we really need to protect ourselves from. And in the early days of sunscreen, we didn't know that much about UVA. And we didn't, we didn't cover it. And so, um, you know, as a result, people ended up exposing themselves to a lot more UVA than they should have because the sunscreens didn't protect well into UVA whatsoever. And so, you know, that's kind of some of the limitations with sunscreen historically. And other countries have really, really gotten much more sophisticated filters, but just not approved here in the States. The only one that we've got that is, you'll find it in everything is avabenzone. The FDA limits how much avabenzone they can put in the sunscreens. They don't allow it to be combined with mineral actives like zinc, titanium dioxide that's based on a theoretical um, in vitro or lab study that showed that mineral actives accelerate the degradation of avabenzone, but that doesn't actually end up being the case clinically or, you know, in real life. So yeah. Um, but anyways, all that rambling aside, I hope it's, you know, a little somewhat easy to follow. Um, you need to protect your skin against UVA. And these from, these sunscreens from Canada are really, really offer a good option. So a big difference between the 45 and the 60, you know, SPF 45 and SPF 60, they're really not different at all in terms of their ability to protect you against a burn but we have learned that actually higher getting a higher spf in your sunscreen is better than we once thought and the reason is a few there are a few reasons the first reason is most consumers don't put enough sunscreen on to actually achieve the spf on the label you have to put it on at two milligrams per centimeter square most consumers don't do that it's really difficult so the higher you go you kind of compensate for that and then um, the other reason is that actually while the SPF reflects UVB protection and the ability of the sunscreen to protect you from a burn, the higher the, the SPF, actually presumably the higher the, the, the um, number of filters or active ingredients. And therefore you, it's extrapolated and it's actually been shown that the higher the SPF, it's actually better uh, protecting you against UVA as well. It's not a direct measure of UVA protection, but it's kind of an indirect measure. So, it, you know, going higher is actually better. So, um, these sunscreens are wonderful. The two here, the 45 and the 60, they both have Mexeril in them. Um, the 60 actually has, um, I think they both have titanium dioxide in them. Uh, which is a physical sunscreen ingredient that blocks UVB and uh, UVA to a certain extent. And because of that, I noticed with the SPF 60, there is a little bit of a white flashiness to it. The SPF 45, does it have that in it? Um, I'm not sure. But the SPF 45, I didn't, I don't really appreciate that as much. But they are fragrance free. Uh, they don't sting around the eyes whatsoever. They're really comfortable to wear. They're great for um, dry skin, oily skin, uh, darker skin types. Even though that, the 60 has that little bit of a white cast to it, really gives good protection against visible light that's going to contribute to things like hyperpigmentation and, and other skin concerns in people with darker skin types in particular. So really love these, really comfortable to wear, um, wonderful for oily skin. They're not greasy. Um, I don't think they are water resistant. That's the only thing about them. Uh, they're, yeah, they're not water resistant. Um, so there's that, but um, you know, they don't have, they're not shiny. They're not drying whatsoever. 
I think if you have oily prone skin, you'll find that you, you get along with it. They remind me, they feel a lot like the Altruist sunscreens, but the Altruist sunscreens are water resistant and have a little bit more shininess to them. So I've really been enjoying those two in particular. Thank you very much for sending them to me. You guys may be wondering like, what's the difference between this and the Crave Beauty, um, the Beat Shield or as it's sold Beat the Sun and, and um, in Korea. The difference is that that one does not have Mexoril in it. It has some other filters that are also fantastic for UVA coverage. That one is a liquid vehicle and has a matte finish to it, a little bit more of a matte finish to it. But um, these are more like a lotion cream and they have Mexoril in them for the UVA as opposed to that one has, um, I believe, Tinnosorb and a few other filters that are escaping me at the moment. So yeah, this one, these are really fantastic and um, they, they don't pill up either. So those are great. Uh, so those of you in Canada, get these. Uh, you know, they're really good. You, I guess you can get them at Shoppers Drug Mart. If you live in New York, you know, and you, I don't know, happen to venture over to Canada, it's pretty close, right? Isn't um, Carabana coming up? Is, is, is that still, does that still happen? It's like a West Indian festival. I always wanted to go, it's in Toronto. Um, so yeah, um, buzz on over there and get, get some, um, but I really like them. All right, and then the, the other one she sent me is the Umbrel Ultralight Advanced SPF 60. This one is, this one is more matte. <coughs> Uh, it is a liquid vehicle, zero cast, but unlike the other two, this one does not have Mexoril in it. This one is uh, just a, a chemical sunscreen. It's got avabenzone in it and um, oxybenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylon. So, you know, similar ingredients to what we have here in the States. This one reminds me a lot of the La Roche-Posay Anthelos SPF 60, uh, the La Roche-Posay USA Anthelos SPF. 60 uh, liquid sunscreen that I've shared with you guys. Um, so this uh, is not as good in terms of the stability of the filters for UVA, but it does give, it is a good broad spectrum sunscreen. It has a nice matte finish to it. It's not super drying though. Um, it does remind me a lot of that La Roche-Posay one. So this would also be good, good for people with oily skin. Um, I think this would be very compatible with cosmetics as well, makeup, and it's fragrance free. So that's another one. It's, it's more of a liquid, whereas the other two are a lotion. So this is kind of similar in consistency to like the Beat Shield. Um, or that La Roche-Posay. The La Roche-Posay Shock of Fluid has kind of a similar, similar uh, vehicle, a liquidy, liquidy vehicle. Um, no fragrance, love that, yeah, it's nice. Oh, but mascara update, I finished the Glossier Lash Slick, really liked that. Honestly, it got significantly better in the latter two thirds of its lifespan than it was even in the first third. It was great, great from the start, but it got much better. And I think I will definitely repurchase that one. Um, I was really surprised by how much I liked that mascara. So I think I might actually get that again. But um, Wander Beauty um, sent me a bunch of makeup earlier this year and I donated pretty much all of it to Project Beauty Share, as you guys saw in my decluttering video. I think it was part two. Um, but I kept the mascara and I just tried it this morning and it kind of, I've never, I don't think I've ever had a mascara that came in a tube like this. They usually come in a in a cylinder. Um, but yeah, this seems okay. What is it called? It's the Unlashed Volume and Curl Mascara. It says 98% uh, saw so dramatic volume and length. To me, it seems very similar to um, just a drugstore mascara, honestly. I don't see that this is substantially better, but this is just the first time I'm putting it on, so I don't wanna jump the gun prematurely. Anyways, update from last week, as far as the CauseRx stuff, I am actually still using the, um, I am, I've continued this week to use the Hyaluronic Acid, and I really like this. It's a good, it's very uh, thick, and it seems like I really get a lot of hydration in my skin when I use this. I definitely think it is substantially better than, I'm gonna review some Trader Joe's skincare for you guys in a while, so spoiler alert, but I think it's substantially better than the Hyaluronic Acid Moisture Boost Serum. This one's just really watery. This has uh, a couple of different forms of hyaluronic acid. 
Uh, so I think you get a better punch here in terms of hydration than with this. This is very watery. And also I noticed, I don't think I mentioned this in the video that it's not gone up yet, I don't think. But this one I noticed burns a little bit, stings a little bit. So yeah, I've really been liking this and I have continued to use the Centella also on top of it underneath a moisturizer and I think they, they pack a nice punch um, in terms of hydration. And speaking of hydration and CauseRx, I've really been loving the Green Tea Aqua Soothing Gel Cream. Um, under also I put it on top of the hyaluronic acid and then I seal it in with a um, with the uh, La Roche-Posay Cicaplast um, and it's really nice it's got green tea aloe and panthenol in it and this I think is substantially better than um, I'm also going to review for you guys the Trader Joe's ultra hydrating gel moisturizer with aloe and green tea extract you might like wonder how they compare I think the CauseRx one is much better this one has coconut in it which I'll talk about in that video which can be irritating to acne prone skin types. Um, and I just find that this, as well as the Trader Joe's Hyaluronic Acid, they're a little filmy and they just don't quite seem to get the hydration into your skin. They seem to more film out a little bit. So like once, once skincare is on, like the next morning, I'll kind of notice that there's like just a little bit of filminess to the skin. Whereas the um, CauseRx um, seems to really impart more actual hydration into the skin and not be filmy on, on there. So I kind of like those. Um, and I've been using them, but yeah, that's just a little skincare update. Oh, I swung into Crow Hair yesterday. Um, cause you remember I returned, uh, my library book. I finished the interestings. It wasn't that interesting, but I enjoyed it. It was good. Anyways, I purchased, um, this was on sale. John Grisham's The Reckoning. I don't normally buy books. Um, but I got this cause I, um, just kind of impulsively, it looked good. And I read the first 10 pages and it actually is pretty good. I enjoy John Grisham. I have a soft spot in my heart for any kind of Southern writing. Um, and this, this seems like it's gonna be good. He kind of writes legal thrillers. I used to be a big fan, of, like read several of his books when I was younger and I haven't read any in a long time. So I'm sure I'll enjoy this as kind of a um, fun read. It, it looks like it's gonna be good. Um, so yeah, that is a little book update. Uh, somebody's getting a treat. I'm really excited. These are the Riley's organic um, little doggy snacks. They are, you. they actually taste really good. I got these for Ty B uh, at Christmas time and then they have been out, I, I get them on iHerb and they've been out of stock for a long time. I finally got them back in and so I got him some more as a treat today. They, this one that I got this time is just sweet potato. Honestly, you could probably make this yourself. It's made with sweet potato, oats, rye flour, peanut flour, coconut oil, and cinnamon. Um, so he loved these. They're just these little tiny bones and he'll be excited to get those. Speaking of eye herb, um, I, you guys know I like to drink natural calm in the morning and I love the seasonal watermelon flavor. And this week I went into Whole Foods because they were having natural calm 40% off. And so I purchased the regular um, watermelon natural calm, but on iHerb they have a watermelon calmful mussels. And I wasn't sure what the difference was. And since I love the watermelon flavor so much, I just decided to get both of them because they are usually limited edition. Like this one says limited edition. As far as I can tell, the main difference between the two is that the, um, Calmful Muscles one has the addition of bromelain in it, which is from pineapple. And it also has beetroot powder in it, which is anti-inflammatory. And it has a little bit more magnesium. It has 10 milligrams more of magnesium. So I have been enjoying this in the evening, actually, after my runs and workouts. And then I have this one in the morning just because I like the taste of it in cold water. But this one I've been having, like sort of you're supposed to have it in warm water and it's really good. So yeah, that's a little natural calm update. Oh, speaking of watermelon and fruit flavored snacks, one moment. Oh, you know my newfound love with the um, fruit flavored raisins. These are so good. So um, this week I tried, I got the strawberry and the watermelon is really good in my opinion, tastes like watermelon candy, but no added sugar um, and no weird stuff. It's just golden raisins that taste like watermelon candy. And they're a little sour. 
I also got this week the strawberry and I tried them uh, last night and they're really good, but they don't have a strong strawberry taste. They definitely have a fruity taste, but it's not overwhelmingly strawberry. So it's a little underwhelming in comparison to what you get with the watermelon as far as flavor punch. But if you are somebody who likes sour candies, these are really good. Hi, Bebo. He is obsessed with this ball. He's so good at catching it. Hi, everybody. Happy weekend. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> oh, you're cute. I have something for you. Tybee, I have something. Biscuit. Because you're such a good boy. Biscuit. <laughs> but first you have to throw the ball. All right. Again? Again? <laughs> oh, look, he, he got it. He went over to my bag and he knew, knew it was in there. Exactly. He's smart. <laughs> Tybee bow tie. <laughs> I made it by his stuff. I made it by his stuff. Tybee Bo. Tybee. Tybee, get out of there. He, he wants to he wants to plan in the Aaron Cotton Life Planner. You got your Riley's. Oh, he's excited. Oh, you recognize these? Oh yes, I know exactly what that is. They smell good. They smell like they had I, I got them just the sweet potato recipe. Oh. Um they have a sweet potato and they have one that's sweet potato and peanut butter and one with molasses. He's waiting patiently, but it smells really good. Tybee, here you go. Oh, delicious, delicious. I told him about what happened with the spiny chayote. What oh. did you say? You can show the picture. I did, I put it, I already put it in. When I took it back, the lady at the uh, customer oh. service desk, uh -huh. she says, I don't think these are chayote. But I googled and it they says are. they can be spiny. It even says on cro uh, where oh. they're stored in the produce section, it says spiny chayote. Oh. You didn't touch them, did you? Um, just once when I reached the oh. bag. Yeah. I was like, what's in there? Yeah. Why because the spines, they have some kind of, um, oh. it, it'll make your fingertips a little numb, in, I think. Oh, that's, no, no, I didn't You didn't that. have any issue? But, you know, after I thought, well, oh. oh, this is some type of tropical fruit that I don't know about. Tybee, what has gotten into you? He wants another Riley, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kissed. Are you asking nicely? Well, no mas. So my mom made some lunch. Um, it looks good. Yeah, I bought the, uh, I've never used it before. It's the Lundberg Wild Rice uh -huh. Trio Mix. Looks good. Um, and just wilted some spinach. And garlic. Yes. And red beans. Are those, um, is that canned beans? Or? No, I made them in the Instant Pot. Ooh, looks good. Yeah, so we'll see. Tabby bow. Did you like your Riley bone? He does like those. <laughs> you look so cute with your Southwestern flair. Anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the vlog and the skincare updates and Ty B. <laughs> um, I'm going to conclude it here. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen, sunscreen and subscribe. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.